This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Glad you could be here. Today we're looking at episode two of Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. And a few things to look out for in this episode. The first is how much more they establish the personality of Camille, our new mecha protagonist, and how different he is from Amuro Ray. Uh, we really get a much better sense of his personality here and some of those differences. Also, keep an eye out for how they're expanding more about the roles of the different factions in here. We only get a, a very quick, brief touch on some of the factions in the first episode, and not really much about what they're doing, why they're doing it. We get a bit more of that here, so see how we get a better sense of what these factions are trying to accomplish, what they're doing, what their roles are politically in the landscape. Uh, and some also interesting animation stuff in this episode as well. So I hope that is something you're going to find interesting. I, I think it is. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to bring in Steve right now. It's kind of interesting because we don't really see anything like air or anything coming out, but we yeah. definitely get a sense of we're silently at running and we're adjusting. This is how we're doing it. Yeah, it's and, really... And yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, it's just, you know, what we didn't get in original Gundam was like mechanics of the suit. It's just the suit doing something. And you were pointing out actually in original Gundam how like it's this representative of a human being, how they would move. And yeah. here we're actually seeing mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's also interesting having a couple of shots. And again, we see these mecha sort of rising up and meeting each other and then preparing. And just we're holding on this moment of these mecha just getting up and prepping and seeing all these different bits of their technology. On the one yeah. hand, it feels like it's a little bit fetishizing of the the mechanics of it, but it also lets the scene breathe. It mm -hmm. prepares you for what's coming next, that you know something big is going to happen. Uh, it's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. And again, contrast this with the original Gundam, like that frenetic pace of those first few episodes. This is much more... Um, not quite languid, but it's taking its time more. Yeah. I still can't get used to the fact that they're firing on a colony. <laughs> I know, right? Like... <laughs> uh, yeah. And the drama of the colors here, the reds and the almost the purpley grays of the smoke here, there's just so much coming yeah. out. And because it's a space, right? Things aren't going to be a fireball the way they would in atmosphere. It's interesting. Right. And notice, again, love the detail, we see it being thrown back and it having to use its thrusters in the back to compensate, work, yeah. Yeah, compensate for that force. Char suddenly hears this heavy breathing and wonders if it's Amaro or Lala, which tells us he's not just hearing normal audio. Right. It's some kind of new type connection he's having, and he's having a weird moment here. Huh. Also, I don't recall seeing red eyes before. <laughs> I don't either, yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely establishing kind of a, a new visual language for this. And of course, now we know in context, that's Camille. Um, right. But the idea that he's able to resonate from at such a distance... That's unusual. Normally, in the past, new type powers have resonated when folks are actually like in conflict or otherwise like, right. engaged with each other. The fact that we, we now have this sort of extension to where somebody can just be in vaguely the same area, I think that's pretty new. So this hey. is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Amaro just ran back to where he just escaped from. Camille. Camille, sorry. Camille, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so Camille just... Yeah, that's... Why? Odd. odd. An odd child. Just saying. <laughs> well. 
So we got a bit of a Camille <laughs> situation here, I think. Yeah. Um, he's definitely a bit of a loose cannon. Um, definitely just doesn't play by the rules. Um, bit of a, a maverick, one might call him. Oh. Hmm. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> also, just have to say, that is some magnificent 80s anime hair. Indeed. I mean, you know, I'm always surprised at the strength of 80s anime gel for hair. This it's is true. Just amazing. Yes. Aquanet for days. <laughs> okay. First off, right, yay. Uh, secondly, this kind of answers that earlier question. The fact that a hole in the colony is treated as routine. Yeah. That, oh, it's just a, probably just a meteor, you know, broke the colony open. So apparently this is a thing that you just can get away with. I guess. Fair enough. So hmm. this specific uh, visual not only has some nice drama to it, um, but this is a very anime thing, right? That throwing out of the hand. Right. Um, Stop. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not something people actually do in life, but it is a some great visual shorthand for drama. Um, yeah. is something you, you would see in sort of uh, theater, right? This very dramatic motion. But it was it's taken <clears throat> over in anime because again, it's just it's this great visual shorthand for um, uh, a dramatic moment. Yeah. Imagine if I did that at work. Stop! Your credit card <laughs> did not work. <laughs> Stop. Savings. <laughs> Hmm. So note here how they're foregrounding the specific things you have to do to control a mecha. Um, you know, before it was very much, Amuro got in there and he had, like, joysticks. Right. And it just moved. We're really getting across to do things. You have to, like, press these buttons, go down here, do all these things. Um, and... Again, on the hand, one hand, it is kind of for the kids to realize, ooh, think this is this is real, but it also does ground it more. So one of the <laughs> great place to stop. Um, actually, there is a detail there. Um, yeah. First of all, the Gundam now is obsolete. Yeah, that's what he's saying. The Gundam, you know, the the, the, the big thing in the in the first uh, first series is like a wonderful tech, a wonderment of technology. Now they're just like, oh, it's how slow. And they're just really, really just like, we can't keep up. We can't do the thing. And now you realize why they're making new Gundams. Yep. Uh, second thing is, is this the first time that we see, like, the cockpit explosion in this series? We do. It is. And do you notice the finger? You see bone? Yeah, you do. I never noticed that before. Mm -hmm. that's, <clears throat> that's a little detail that someone just morbidly put in there. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, death. Okay. And I think this is Macross right here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we, we definitely got this kind of stuff in Macross, these sort of explosion, you know, people are dying. And I think that's been kind of brought, elevated back into Gundam. It's like, okay, now we have to show that. Um, right. Which became, again, very much a classic element of real robot in general. And it's not that you don't see that kind of thing at all in original Gundam. Um, it just wasn't <laughs> as lovingly detailed. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make sure that you see the moment of death right here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In all its, all its horrible glory. I'm also realizing every time now we cut back to a colony, we see it rotate. Um, oh wow! Yeah, you're and right. This is something that they just again didn't have the time or budget to do back in the original Gundam, um, but they're really making sure that there's always some spin um, to, get, to get it across in which. I also don't know how realistic that is. Like, that's that's a really fast spin. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can but... just imagine everybody in the colony going, someone pressed the wrong button, we're smashed <laughs> up against the wall. Uh, and here we're getting across what you were mentioning earlier, how industrialized and smog-filled this colony is. Yeah. Okay, so now <clears throat> folks are starting to realize who that is. Um, just like the Red Comet. Ha ha ha. Sorry to tell you, buddy. Check out that maneuver. Right? <laughs> he drops to, like, 
it would, I mean, it's probably a, a, some distance, but it looks like, like 10 feet above the surface, and then just, uh, geez. Gee. I do want to point out something about the animation here, um, and it's a good example of how it is very difficult to animate these sort of ballistic motions. Something close to the uh, viewer and then going far away because every frame you have to redraw that smaller. You can't just That's zoom. Right. Um, especially back in the day when you don't have any digital tools to do that. You can't like shrink down the thing. You can actually photocopy it. That's what something that people would do is they would literally photocopy the... the the uh, cell and like set the photocopier to like 80 percent <laughs> you could do that um and it would, it would shrink it down but you can tell like all the lines shrink so it looks weird so you notice what they do here you get these initial drawings of like very so close you're just seeing a, a piece of the mech then right. and we just get those pieces because they're fairly easy to draw then very quickly they are filling up a small portion of the frame and then very quickly after that, they're basically dots. Yeah. And this is how to do that. You you um, do exactly that. And uh, it's, again, it's, it's just smart animation. All right. <laughs> In early episodes of Gundam, it's never good when the girl runs into her house yelling after her mother. Yeah. We all know where this she, is going. She, Mom's wearing a red shirt. Yep. So a couple of things to note here. <laughs> the Gundam right. is bleeding. Yeah, I would just, I'm like going. I I know that's supposed to be like oil or something, but that just looks like blood. It just looks like blood. And again, reasonable visual shorthand for it's dying, right? It's it's dead. Yeah. It is weird that it's red, but okay. Um, I think that 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 does sort of make sense. But then here in a moment, and I'll, I'll jump forward, uh, you'll, you'll notice how earlier on they're showing a lot of detail in the explosions, uh, and then they don't. One second. Yeah. We got, have actually a really cool animation of him soaring up, getting hit, and falling down. But then it's just big orange jiggly ball thing. <laughs> you know. Jiggly ball of death. Jiggly ball of death. Um, which, again... We've got so much animation, so much going on here. Because it's going, it's moving so fast, and we've seen so much cool animation, you can get away with something here. You know, no one's, right. no one's going to fault you for that. You can't draw everything in that much detail. I'm sorry, I just, I love this soundtrack. I think it is one of the <laughs> most like iconic soundtracks of the 80s. But the plinking strings here as he's sneaking <laughs> by it's like almost like tom and jerry like tom exactly. the cat it's like, <laughs> like it works but it just kind of leaps out at you now <laughs> huh All okay right. yeah so now we're getting some uh context on these titans everyone's kind of annoyed at the titans now we know they're here to clean out the remainder of the Xeon. um this is a new thing in the sense that you know, original gun, eventual Gundam ends and the war's over. Uh, um, but now we go, oh, there are Xeon remnants around who may want to you know, bring back Xeon, presumably. Interesting. I'm sorry, Bright. You, you should know this, Bright. You should know this by now. <laughs> Yeah, or maybe not. he's having a PTSD moment where he's like, <laughs> oh, God, not true. again. <laughs> Let me guess. Did you have at least three simulations before you get in this thing? <laughs> where you at two? Oh, dear. Um, although, to be fair to Bright, I wonder if he's challenging her. Yeah. And basically saying, look, you haven't had enough training. Are you okay with this? Yeah. I was going to say, um, I guess you have never heard of a guy named Amaro. Exactly. Um, it's interesting that this episode is so clearly establishing that like, what Amaro did was not what he should have done, in a sense. Right. Um, like they're, they're really hammering that home, uh, that this is a bad idea. Um, also interesting in that this is a 
fairly similar situation to what Amaro was in. Right. Um, but also the fact that... So, and this is, this is the other exception. Um, Camille isn't doing this to defend other people, to help right. out. Uh, you know, when, when Amaro was doing this, everything was going to pieces. He jumps in, he defends himself. Nobody knows what's going on until after the fact. And they're like, who's this kid in the Gundam? Um, right. And here, like, he's literally, he's in front of all of these military personnel doing this. And they're like, no, no, stop. Yeah. Hmm. This time around, they're not getting their butts handed to them. and, and yeah. Well, they are, but it's not, it's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like it was. And this was not a top secret project like um, an original Gundam. Well, people and, kind of more or less know in, well, in a certain sense. And, and uh, uh, to that point, like, there's not a war on. Right. You know, um, it, it, you know, it's a hidden project, but it's not like this is the turning point of the war. This is just the next cool thing we're building, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, we're I, going for the worst possible way to get out of the hangar, <laughs> aren't we? And, and there is definitely a certain undercutting of the drama of the moment where, um, like, so there's later a series of SD Gundam shorts where they make fun of Gundam, if you will, and they're made by Sunrise. Uh, it was the beginning of the SD Gundam movement. And the name of the first episode of that is, Will the Gundam Stand Up? Because um, <laughs> always what happens in the first episode, right? Is the Gundam always yeah. and gets up? Uh, and I love that they're just undercutting that. I'm like, we fi he finally gets up. And he's like, hmm? Head's stuck up under the <laughs> <laughs> um, This does feel like a Tomino moment. Of, yeah, you, you know, he's he's doing the wrong thing. Yeah, <laughs> and here we go. Yo, yeah, he's just like, ah, oh, man, no, please. <laughs> I know what's gonna happen next. They're gonna find out I'm here. The kid's exactly. here. They're gonna be like, you've done this before, right? <laughs> Maybe I should lie. I don't know. <laughs> so, if you wanted an indication of how much Bright has matured and evolved as a commander from episode one of original Gundam, where he was like, you know, oh, the enemy's attacking. What on earth should we do? He's like, why yeah. hasn't anyone fired yet? Like, yeah. let me just go yeah. and commandeer a thing and fire some missiles. <laughs> just going to blow some crap up. <laughs> but I just love how, like, the kid is just like, okay, I've got these things over here, and I'm and they're, they're like, raining havoc on this, on this side. But I want to make sure I want to get the guy that smacked me. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm just like, what, are you going to commit murder? Are you going to step on this guy? What are you going to do? What is your plan? Oh, you don't have one. You've have never one. had one. <laughs> uh. And here we have the light Yagami laugh. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and this is also our, I think, our strongest evidence yet. Uh Camille's kind of an anti-hero. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, this is not something you do with a your typical shonen protagonist. Yeah. Oof. Oh, well. Yeah. Getting the same vibes as from Amaro. And again, this is the weird red thing. Um, definitely some new type vibes going on. Wow. Also intriguing that same things happen to Emma here. You know, implying that she's also must have some new type sensitivity. Yeah. Well, this looks familiar. Yeah, exactly. Is that a little... What is the mecha in the upper left corner on the... That's a gun... T that's show. a gun... Um, isn't that I, a gun I, tank? I, I, uh, no. 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 I, no. What... Is, is it a gun... Wait, gun it cannon? might be a gun cannon with just one cannon. Right. It could also just be some other sunrise mecha. I don't know. Mm. Um, I, I need a deeper geek than myself to <laughs> identify that. Because it kind of looks like Soundwave from Transformers. <laughs> it does. Um, but interesting. I wonder if that's a little Easter egg. So, you know, they were talking about having an outdated mecha. That one is really outdated. Isn't yeah. that like pre-Gundam, right? Uh, so this is a GM. This is a. Okay. Th this is what they mass produced after they realized they could not actually make the Gundam at scale. So they simplified the Gundam 
down oh, okay. to this design that they could mass produce. So it's it, uh, I think it's something like like a third the power of a Gundam. Uh. Um, that's that's what these are. But like notice the surgical attack yeah. of Shar here, where he just hits the head, takes out the head, and we see the head literally like blow up. Uh, and also interesting that that's not where the pilot is. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes out all of the sensors uh, and renders the Gundam or the, the, the mobile suit effectively useless. Uh, although it can, you know, you, you could try, but you're blind. Um, but notable that Shar right. is really um, pulling back here. Yeah. The show is very careful here to contextualize the battle with other actual human beings on the ground, particularly Fogg. Right. Uh, and again, this is, you know, why is Tomino doing this? Uh, we've had a lot of exciting mecha action here, but he's pulling us back to remind us of the fragility of life. That, you know, if one of these mecha had come down two feet further to one side, Fa would be just, you know, frightened. Right. Um, Crimson stain. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we can't get too far away from that. Yeah. So we're making a statement here <laughs> with the Titans to have a Titan respond to a question from Captain Bright with a punch. Yeah. Um, we're really, you know, we know how we should feel about the Titans now. Unquestionably. Also note, <laughs> Jesus. Bright's reaction to all this. You know, what does Camille do when he gets hit? He gets all annoyed and, and thing. Bright just comes right back up and just continues arguing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Don't care. Just, you know, goes right past me. I love this man. And, like, this is pretty brutal. Yeah. It goes on. It, it's a full-scale beating. Some might argue a little over the top uh, for the point they're trying to make, but yeah. definitely makes you not like the Titans. No. And you get this little moment with Emma here and that little sense of she's not comfortable mm. with this. Yeah, she's not with this part of the program. No. Bergline? But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what where that comes from. Yeah. It, it could just be sci-fi, you know, yeah. technology, throwing some things together. Dilithium crystals, right? Right. Um, but interesting. I, I do like that they're trying to create some some rea reality here. So that is actually a thing. Really? Yes. A sticky substance spread on twigs to trap small birds. Ha! Huh. That's yeah, cool. That's an actual thing. Yeah. Interesting. And, and presumably this is some artificial, you know... Right. Substance that it's you know equivalent. They didn't like literally gather that from a bunch of birds. Um, but yeah, that's that's really cool. Wow. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> interesting. That is very interesting. Why are Zeon remnants coming after them? Huh. You know. Now I think about it. It kind of makes sense. Zeon still had mobile suit superiority in the one year war, but the Gundam as in the Gundam, the Gundam, Gundam as they, an exception, right? Right. They were better, but even at the end, with all those GMs and you know mass-produced mecha going on during Abu coup, it was maybe even, right? Right. Um, right. After the war, the Titans would have um, acquired appropriated all, yeah. appropriate all this stuff, and who else would have had it other than like the anti-Zeon forces? And even further, it would have made sense that if you're trying to infiltrate Zeon or, or wipe out the Zeon, you would use Zeon stuff to confuse them with or otherwise be able to infiltrate. Right. Interesting. Notice Shar's expression here. Yeah. You know, he's getting shot at. There's this smile on his face of like, oh, goody. <laughs> yeah. I know this. I like this. This is fun for me. <laughs> and another surgical strike. Hmm. I also do like the idea that Camille being... One second. Uh, hold on. My computer uh, froze up. Okay. 
Um, I do like the idea that Camille being a space noid is extra sensitive to the sound of air escaping. Yeah. So he could have noticed that and be like, I, I, that, something's wrong. That's cool. There's a problem. Yep. I'm just stripping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's trying to... Oh, that's clever. That is very clever. Pulls out a handkerchief to see yeah, where it floats to. Mmm. Mmm. Nice. Mm. Okay, okay, so we're getting this weird music and this, like, soft lighting, and it's just like... Are, are, are we going to a yaoi video? <laughs> are King Shari and then... No, obviously not. But it's just kind of a weird yeah. transition. It's also interesting that the the lighting here makes it look like original Gundam. Um, oh, it does, yeah. You know, same color scheme as, as the RX-78 too. Um, and I wonder if that isn't a little bit of <clears throat> communicating to the audience. Don't worry, this is our hero. This is the thing, you know we've gone in a very different direction in some ways in this episode. Yeah. Um, but don't worry. We're, we're kind of, we're, we're good. We'll be back there soon. Um, also odd because we haven't seen this light source yet. So it, it takes you off, 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 off kilter. But yeah, this, this very light music. It's an odd moment. So he says there's something very nostalgic about this. After just saying he's not used to being in space, yeah. I suspect this is Tomino making the point that space is the womb, right? Um, right. Everyone kind of comes back to, to this, uh, and that is very much where Camille is right now. He's kind of in this big, floating in this big emptiness, uh, and that's the best I can think of of what, what they're talking about here. Yeah. All right, wow. that's episode two. Wow. So, there's a lot of people we don't like in this episode at first. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you know, you, you, you watch this and, you know, you know Camille is not Amaro and you know that he's different and blah, blah, blah. But you kind of get this sense, like, especially when you're just realizing that this kid has got a grudge against a Titan and he's bullying the bully. You're just like, oh, we're supposed to like you, but then don't. And, you know, <laughs> Bryce getting slapped around himself. He's getting his own bright slap. And, yeah. you know, and, you know, <clears throat> okay, we, we figured out the Titans are jerks. We didn't realize they were the enemy now. Yeah. And this is like, I think when you start getting into how this is what I was kind of thinking about or uh, as the mm -hmm. episode was going, that Gundam shows that we have now are often factional. They have, like, a whole list of different factions, like, you know, Gundam Wing, you know, yeah. where you have to pull down the, the freaking chart. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm kind of wondering if this is kind of, like, where, where that kind of starts, where, you know, okay, we have the Titans, mm -hmm. who are supposed to be with the Federation, but really aren't. They're doing, they have their own agendas, and they're doing their own things. And then you have Char, who's doing his own thing, but we're not sure what he's working for himself or, or somebody else. We're getting the idea that there are disparate Xeon things out there still operating so now we have all these factional things and we come to realize that as in the end of the episode camille's like going out into space with these guys helping them to steal a gundam a new yeah. variant of the gundam mm -hmm. and by the episode we're actually okay with that <laughs> because everyone else just about are a pack of a-holes and you're yeah. just like I, ah fine just yeah go with shark Mm -hmm. He seems yeah. the, the, the least destructive of all of them. Because, again, to your point, he's being very surgical. He and his troopers are being very, very surgical in what they're doing. They're not trying to actually destroy the colony. They're not. They're trying to limit the damage that they're doing. They're really specifically doing the one thing to get. Mm -hmm. And But everyone else is just like, yeah, we don't care. Well, and compare this to original Gundam, where Federation the Federation is presented as fairly neutral, right? There are Right. nice people and not nice people and so forth but they're just you know the kind of default faction that we're following right Zeon they spend all that time to really establish that the Zeon soldiers are honorable and and you know uh, uh, good soldiers and so forth and so on with some exceptions who are kind of you know <laughs> yeah uh, doing their own thing but uh, like they really lay this this groundwork that you know you're not supposed to hate the the Zeon at all nor are you supposed to hate Federation you are supposed to hate the Titans. Titans, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no, 
the character designs, their actions, everything that they do. And then that, of course, makes you, you know, you don't wonder why the Federation is teaming up with them. But because their goal is to get rid of the Zeon as well. Yeah. But clearly they have an agenda as to why they want to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We just um, have, we just don't know what that is yet. Yeah. And I also find it notable how you get the sense of this extreme military organization. You know, the, the idea that you establish this one kind of branch, this one sub-branch, if you will, of the military for this one purpose and how that very thing can warp them and give them this idea that, oh, we're special, we're, we're specially trained, we have this thing. You know, we, we presumably get all of these, this special treatment because we're, we're doing this and how that really um, might cause a lot of this, you know, might, might cause right. a lot of their, their sense of entitlement. And, you know, Bright is trying to make the point to them before they kick his butt that, you know, it, he's just like, you know, don't you, to that effect, he goes, don't you understand that what you're doing is <clears throat> giving them cause yeah. to come at you mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. And if you, and when you notice that the, the Titans are basically saying this is our territory. So, I, you know, at this point, they're not even thinking themselves as part of the Federation. Yep. They have their own colony, literally. They have their own thing that they're doing. They and to your point, they, they are very entitled and they think they know what they're doing, which we know that they're not as good of the soldiers as you know the <laughs> former Xeon guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, they're doing their own thing. They're aiming for their own side, their own nation, their own whatever it is. And it's entirely military and you know, the way that they had the character design Captain oh, was it Om? Om, yep. Uh, Om. And, you know, like, you know, literally no neck, just a, right, you know, and, and, you know, the evil sunglasses, you know, just, he, he looks like a thug. They're all thugs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They're all thugs. That's the yeah. other part of it. It's, it's, mm-hmm. like, it's like, as you were saying, the Zeons, you know, we, we, we get a lot, we understand them because they're, they're being honorable soldiers and, and throughout Mobile Suit Gundam, you see them do things that are human, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they, yeah. they, they help people when... You know the the, the 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 needs arise and stuff like this. These, these guys are just thugs. They they yeah. just they're just they have no qualm about kicking a federation's officer's butt, mm-hmm. which tells you that the federation does not care as long as the ends are, are being met. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you have to ask yourself, you know, is this why we're okay <laughs> with Camille stealing a, a Gundam variant and taking it with Char, who we know will. <laughs> will do most wonderful things with it for himself, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, it's also interesting, to looking at Char now, how Char is still very skilled, uh, but he clearly has a specific agenda that he's following militarily. There doesn't mm-hmm. seem to be any of that hidden agenda you had before. Uh, he's right. curious about the new type sort of stings he's getting, but otherwise, he's like, nope, we have this thing to do. We're going to do that, and we're going to get out. Um, seeing that from Char, given everything he went through in original Gundam, uh, really opens up new territory for him as a character. I think you get yeah. a sense that okay, he's he is he's a soldier now um, for this this right. for whatever organization he's part of. Uh, he's kind of found his lane, if you will. Um, which is just not what you'd expect, kind of from a, a, a you know a sequel series. I think it's one of the things that makes Zeta so interesting is that you have these characters in these kind of surprisingly different uh, roles. You have you know Bright comes back and you know again if this were another a franchise he'd be an admiral he'd be you know doing right. all this great stuff. No, he's just another commander who and he gets his butt kicked by the Titans. Like what's going on here? Very interesting. He's probably thinking as he's getting his butt kicked, going, God, you, dudes, you have no idea. I had to deal with a kid on Spectrum. I gave me attitude. I had this, this, this guy named Kai who's just, oh, my God, he was a mess. <laughs> and the kids, oh, my God, do you know what's like going through a battle when you're almost about to die? And the kids are just playing ball on the bridge of the ship. I mean, come on. 
go ahead, kick me in the face. You can't do anything else to me that these people have done. Oh, man. Poor Bright. Poor Bright. <laughs> um, and he's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Funny more where, where that came from. So that's episode two of Zeta Gundam. Interesting stuff there. Um, can't wait to see what happens in episode three.